I'm Allison Singer with the Autism Science Foundation, and we are here today with Dr. Elena Tenenbaum. She is one of the Autism Science Foundation's 2011 postdoctoral grantees. She's working in uh, the lab with Dr. Steven Scheinkopf at the Brown University Center for the Study of Children at Risk at Women and Infants Hospital. Thanks so much for joining us, Elena. Thanks very much for having me here. So your study is called Attentional Distribution and Word Learning in Children with Autism. Tell us a little bit about your project. So I'm interested in how the attentional distribution of kids with autism may be having an effect on their language acquisition. So we know that children with ASD have a tendency to um, show aberrant attentional patterns to social scenes in particular. Um, a lot of people from ASF have actually contributed to that work. Kevin Pelper's lab has done a lot on this. Ami Klein's lab has done a lot on this. And we know that that aberrant social attention may be playing some role, for example, with gaze following, the tendency to look where someone else is looking on language behavior, and language acquisition, excuse me. So what we want to know is how attentional patterns, both in gaze following behavior and potentially attention to the face in general, may be contributing to language acquisition. My own dissertation was looking at how language, I'm sorry, how attention to faces in early infancy relates to language onset, and we're finding that both gaze following behaviors and attention to the mouth in particular, and some sensitivity to where information is in a social scene, so your tendency to look at the mouth when there's information in the mouth, your tendency to look at the eyes when there's information there, actually seems to predict um, vocabulary growth in toddlerhood. What's been done so far is to look at these behaviors in infancy and then look at longitudinally the language outcomes a few years later. And what I'm interested in is looking more specifically within a word learning context when somebody is trying to teach you a new word, how does your attentional distribution to that scene, how does where you're looking at that person or at the object on their face relate to how you're going to learn the new word. So we're going to be testing children with ASD, children with language delays, and typically developing children to see how where they look on a screen might relate to their ability to learn that new word. And what is it that you expect to find in the study? So based on the previous research about aberrant social attention, we're expecting to see different patterns for the three different groups. Um, the autistic children we expect might look more at the object than at the person Within the face, they might, depending on the age of the child, be more focused on the mouth. At later ages, or more focused on the eyes, actually, in the earlier ages. Um, and with the typically developing kids, we're expecting to see, for the youngest kids, a lot of attention to the mouth with um, shifts up to the eyes as they go on. And how will we take what you learn, or what you expect you'll learn, and how will that translate into helping children to gain more language skills? Yeah, that's the most important question to me, is once we can understand more about how typically developing children and how children with autism who do end up learning language very well, how their attentional distribution, how their behaviors lead to the most success in language learning, then I hope that we can use that to um, better inform our interventions with um, early detection with children who have been um, diagnosed with autism spectrum disorders early on and use that information to inform the interventions that'll help them acquire language earlier. And once we can um, get more vocabulary growth early in development, that can lead to greater language growth later on, we know from previous research. So is this, stu this study will not only identify why children are having difficulty um, acquiring language, but will it have some predictive value? Will it, have, will it help to uncover information about how we can better teach children to gain language? Talk a little bit about that. So that's the goal, is what we want to identify is which children are doing best at learning language, both in this context and how they're doing outside of the lab, and then what is their attention? Are they focusing more on the mouth? Are they focusing more on the eyes? And then when we're working with other kids who might be showing signs of language delay or signs of ASD, we can try to use that information, try to direct them to the most relevant areas and make sure that they're gaining the same information that the other children who are automatically looking in those areas are gaining. So that's, I mean, honestly, that's what we loved about this study, mm -hmm. that it's an opportunity to look at children who have done well mm -hmm. in early intervention mm -hmm. and see, try to figure out why they've done well right. and use that to help children who have not done right. so well. Right, and that's the goal. 
um, to really see what the difference is between the kids who are showing signs of serious foot language growth and those who are having more trouble and see how we can inform interventions that will help those who aren't getting there on their own. So we are here today at the International Meeting for Autism Research, the IMFAR. You've been here a couple of days. What has been the best part of being at IMFAR for you? Actually, one of my favorite parts happened on the very first morning um, we were here. Dr. Karmalaf Smith gave a really interesting talk about the importance of looking at developmental changes in behaviors, and that has helped me think about how I'm going to take this project on to future research, that we might see kids who are doing um, one particular set of behaviors in a certain age and looking in one area or focusing their attention in a certain way at that age, and then later on that might shift, that we might see compensation later on if they're not looking where they need to look initially. And I think it's going to be really important to see how these behaviors shift across development and how those shifts relate to their language onset. Well, that has certainly been a theme of this IMFAR, that we have to really look at the different ages and stages exactly. of individuals with autism. Thank you so much for joining us today. We Thank are really looking forward much. to the outcome of your work, and good luck with it. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of the efforts.